One of the most known longevity supplements in the world is resveratrol, also known as the red wine vitamin. Now, personally, I don't take any resveratrol. I don't think it's worth it. And in this video, I'm going to explain you the reasons why. Do it. Resveratrol is a plant polyphenol, specifically a stilbenoid, that's concentrated mostly in the skin and seeds of grapes, berries, fruit, and some vegetables. Resveratrol is considered a sirtuin activating compound that is thought to potentially mimic calorie restriction. Calorie restriction being the most powerful known ways to extend lifespan. David Sinclair, the scientist who popularized resveratrol, discovered that the nematodes resveratrol increases lifespan by 70% by mimicking calorie restriction and stimulating SIR2, a SIR2 gene. The closest SIR2 equivalent of SIR2 in humans is SIRT1 or SIR2 in 1. SIRT1 plays an important role in activating DNA repair proteins. It's specifically involved with repairing the double helix of DNA. SIRT1 can also induce cellular autophagy. In 2006, obese mice when given resveratrol were seen to live almost as long as healthy ones. However, in 2011, a study seeking to replicate those results didn't find similar longevity results when controlling for genetic variables. They also discovered that the benefits of calorie restriction had nothing to do with a SIR2 gene. In fact, under certain conditions, blocking SIR2 actually extends lifespan. To make matters worse, another 2010 study revealed that it wasn't resveratrol that activated SIRT1, but a peptide substrate containing a covalently attached fluorophore. So, resveratrol hasn't been found to actually be a SIRT2 inactivator, and it definitely hasn't been found to extend lifespan. Disappointed! Instead, a 2020 paper established that the primary effect of resveratrol on human cells is low-level replicative stress independent of SIRT1. So that's the reason why it mimics this calorie restriction and might mimic some aspects of exercise by causing low-level cellular stress. By now, over these 20 years or so, there have been over 150 clinical trials trying to test the effects of resveratrol on these different kinds of metabolic diseases. Resveratrol has had a primarily neutral effect, and if it did have a positive effect, then it was consumed in very large doses, over 500 milligrams a day. In one study, daily oral resveratrol total supplementation of 1000 milligrams for 16 weeks didn't improve inflammatory markers or glucose homeostasis in middle-aged men with metabolic syndrome. However, resveratrol did increase cholesterol levels, which is not ideal. A placebo-controlled randomized clinical trial on high-dose resveratrol treatment, like 1.5 grams a day for 6 months, hasn't been found to alleviate non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So the efficacy of resveratrol for metabolic diseases isn't there. <laughs> there is no, no like real uh, long-term studies and indicating that it benefits any aspects of like diabetes, heart disease or anything of like that. But it might come with some negative side effects. Resveratrol has been found to lower androgen precursors like DHEA, DHEAS and androstenedione. But fortunately circulating testosterone, free testosterone and dehydrotestosterone have been seen to be unaffected. The most worrisome part about this is that resveratrol may have a negative effect on exercise and uh, fitness. It's been seen that resveratrol at doses of 200 250 milligrams a day for eight weeks appears to blunt the positive effects of exercise on VO2 max in aged men. And resveratrol doesn't improve metabolic and inflammatory status in skeletal muscle of aged men, unlike exercise does. So overall, there just isn't enough evidence to tell that resveratrol has any positive effect. It definitely doesn't have any positive effects on increasing lifespan. It doesn't have that effect and the evidence about improving metabolic health is also quite limited. What there has been shown is that it might have a negative effect on exercise adaptation, specifically VO2 max. And the last part about it is the cost as well. So resveratrol isn't cheap. It's not like your regular vitamin. It can cost up to 50 or more dollars per month. For that amount of money, you can definitely get some other much cheaper uh, supplements like uh, creatine, glycine, NAC, etc. that uh, may have like a much bigger effect on longevity and health span. So the reason why I'm not taking resveratrol is that it may inhibit exercise adaptations in a negative way and it doesn't have like any actual, you know, <laughs> clinical studies showing that it uh, has a very significant effect on improving health. And lastly, the price as well, it can be quite costly for a lot of people. So I think it's not on the like uh, priority list of uh, the supplements to take for longevity. Of course, if you have a lot of uh, disposable income, then it doesn't really matter. Uh, but still, like, I wouldn't take it like regularly on an everyday basis. If you do want to slow down aging and live longer, then I'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock. If you're interested, then email me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.